Hey guys, it's Angela. I am Midmodern Mama, and I'm here to walk you through some of the features in the Nice List, which is my new giving guide. The Nice List is kind of part Christmas journal and part Christmas planner, and um, I'm super excited. It's available for pre-order right now on my website, midmodernmama.com. I actually only sell it by pre-order. Um, and it's available in a few stores this year nationally, but um, your best chance to get a copy, honestly, is to pre-order it. So it's available. It's $29. That includes shipping in the United States. If you're not in the U.S., um, contact me and we can work out an international shipping rate. We can totally do that too. But anyway, this is the nice list. And this is the 2018 edition. It has a beautiful vegan leather cover. There's in my stories right now. We are voting on what color the cover will be for 2019. It looks like at the moment, a uh, really pretty green is going to win. Um, and I've always kind of thought, well, if you have, this is something you buy every year. So on your shelf, you know, eventually, Eventually, maybe it's red, green, red, green, red, green, um, year to year going through. So we'll see how that goes. Hi, guys. Hi, Danny and Little Bird Press. Thanks for showing up. And Shoe Lover 79. Hello. Thank you for coming. So this is the nice list. Um, it starts off, it's kind of hard to see the whole thing. Um, but you have a nice place to put um, your name and phone number and contact information in case, God forbid, this were to disappear. Oh my goodness. Um, I will tell you, I kept this in my purse for an entire year, or uh, sorry, uh, probably four or five months though, actually. In my purse, it still looks fantastic. It's very durable and I didn't lose it. Um, here's my copy from last year. So you can see it still looks almost brand new um, with the exception of all the scribbling and the writing and the notes. So if you open it up, you know, we have a table of contents, all of those kinds of things. And then there's a little bit of an introduction for how to use the nice list. I created this system when I was, um, I started my career as a teacher, and then I ended up working at a large church. And I was crazy busy at Christmas. And by the time I got to Christmas Day, I was exhausted and I, and I really hadn't enjoyed Christmas much. And now that I'm a mom and I'm really busy, it still is such a busy, busy time of the year. So I started off very simply. This is the first, um, you can look, have a look. This is the first way that I tracked Christmas. And basically it started off with just tracking Christmas gifts. Um, and making notes about Christmas gifts and that kind of thing. And this is very kind of homemade. Um, 2002, I think, was the first year I have in here. Um, but, like, I have a list of, like, people's china patterns in here and all kinds of things like that. Um, as people were getting married and I kept receipts, I would paste envelopes in the back and I kept receipts and um, put our Christmas cards in here and that kind of thing. And then I got a little more formal about it and I created this. This was just my very first um, edition of the nice list. I basically did this myself with the help of um, my friend Holly who does all of my graphic design and we put this together and I literally gave it to 15 people and I said see if you would use this um, if this is something that is helpful for you. And so a bunch of my friends kind of gave it a test run too. And then last year, we came up with this. Um, and so it has been tested. It has been um, used and abused in lots of ways. And we have come to a system which is pretty great. So like I said, we start with kind of how to use this. And I'll do a bunch of videos. Um, we might even do some Facebook Lives where, where everybody can ask questions and that kind of thing. Um, but this is how to use the nice list. And then I have a whole section about thoughtful giving. One of my big things is that, you know, Christmas, when the Christmas season gets so busy, I think sometimes giving stuff um, becomes less thoughtful and it's, um, 
it's really easy to let your budget get out of control because you just buy, 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 buy instead of um, being really thoughtful and intentional about it. And it's simply because we're busy and because you walk into a store and it's an onslaught of buy me, buy me, buy me. And I totally get that. That is how retail works. I used to work retail when I was in graduate school. I totally understand. But um, it can be really hard when you're trying to stick to a budget. Really hard. So I've developed this whole system. Um, And the very first thing that you do is sit down and make a list of all of the people in your life, everyone to whom you feel like you need to make give a gift. And then you divide them out and you divide them into three sections, your family list. And that, of course, can include like close friends or boyfriends or whoever, the people who are, who for whom you give the most thoughtful, sometimes the most expensive um, gifts on your list. Then you have your friends list and you have your school and work. So those are kind of your acquaintances. Um, and then if you use you go back here. And there's a budgeting tool. And you sit down and you set out a budget. And I have a whole other um, video on my website about how to use the budgeting tool. But basically, you count up the number of people on each of those lists, family, friends, work, and school. You give the, a number of people who are on that list And then you assign a percentage of your total budget. So let's say you have $400 to spend on Christmas and you decide you're going to spend $50, sorry, 50% on your family out of that percentage. And those percentages don't matter. You you decide. Maybe you spend 50% on your family and 25% on your friends and 25% on work and school. Um, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. I mean, you, you, um, make those decisions, but in the end, when you've done the math, you have a total budget, but you also have a per gift budget, which you then transfer over to, oops, sorry, they're on this side, your list here. So you have your family list, meaningful gifts and you put your per gift budget up here. That way you are always reminded what um, what you are to spend on each of those gifts. And it doesn't matter what that budget can be. You may end up with $5 per gift. Um, you may end up with $50 per gift. You may end up with $500 per gift. It doesn't matter what those numbers are. What matters is Um, that you stick to that budget. And I have lots of tips and tools on my website and also in this book to help you do that. And one of the things we're going to do this year is have a lot more conversation, um, especially in my Facebook page, about how to um, work through this book and stick with it. Um, Hi, guys, all of you who've joined us. I see Bunka Donna and oh, I'm just grateful that you guys are all here. Thank you so much for coming. So you've worked through the budgeting tool. You have that. You also have this great section called your family list. So like I said before, your family gifts are the people who to on whom you probably are going to spend the most money. And these are the most thoughtful gifts. So you get this two page and actually this year it's going to be a four page spread for each individual on your family list. So their name, relationship, their birth date, clothing sizes, if it's somebody that you would buy clothing for, you sit down and fill fill this out. What are their interests? What are they, um, what do they love to do? Um, What do they need? Have you talked to their mom, for example? Maybe it's one of your nieces. What is it that that child needs? And um, I have lots of nieces. And so, you know, that's one of the conversations I always have in the fall. And I make sure that I update clothing sizes because kids grow and change. Um, Is there something that they're collecting? One of my nieces is way into mermaids. The other one is way into unicorns right now. So I make sure that I have that written down on their pages. 
allergies. Um, maybe you have somebody in your family who's gluten-free or um, something. Make sure you write those kinds of things down. Um, and anything they particularly don't like, um, write those things down too so that as you're buying, as you're shopping, um, you're really keeping the whole person in mind. <clears throat> There's also a notes page here. Maybe you have some ideas or an idea occurs to you throughout the year because once you have this book, it's something that you can use throughout the year and reference. And in fact, the second spread, which isn't in the 2018 edition, but will be in the 2019 edition, is a place to track all the birthday presents and Valentines and um, anniversary gifts and whatever other occasion that you give, graduation or whatever, you can write it down and that way you have a record. One of the reasons that I created the nice list was um, one year we were opening gifts on Christmas morning and I realized that I had given two of my sisters who are very close in age the same gift for their birthday that I had then repeated at Christmas. And so I started writing things down. So I was sure I wasn't going to do that again, too. Um, so that's just kind of a funny aside, but it is a helpful thing. So you have actually pages to track in here 20 different people. And I know that's a lot. Some of you have really small families, but I have a big family. I have lots of sisters. I have lots of nieces. Um, and so I have... You have 20 people there that you can um, track really closely. And there are blank pages in the back just in case you have an even bigger family and you need to track more. I also have a whole section in the front for calendars. So not only is this about gift giving, but it is also about managing your time and managing what you are doing over the holidays. And I like to describe this as kanmari your Christmas. If you are into the KonMari method, you keep the things that spark joy and you say goodbye to the things that don't. And that will relieve so much of the stress of the holidays. Oh my goodness, I can't even tell you. So we start, we have calendars for both November and December. And not only is there a monthly view, like this, but then it's broken down by week also. So you have a weekly view. And I, one of the things that my family does, my husband and I, in the first part of November, we will sit down and we will have a family meeting and we will schedule out all kinds of things that are important in our family. And that's what these pages are for. We schedule a day to go Christmas shopping together. Um, my, we, our son goes to school and my husband takes the day off of work. And we have done this since before we were married. Um, we have always done a day where we go Christmas shopping together. Um, I think it's really important that I'm not the only person in our family who does all the Christmas shopping. That may not be how your family works, but that's one of the things we schedule. We also sit down and we schedule things like our family. Um, my husband comes from a family of kind of Italian origin. I come from a family of Norwegian origin. So there are lots of traditions that are really important to us. So we make sure that on this calendar, on his calendar, um, that we have things like Santa Lucia Day, which is something that we celebrate. Um, I actually sit down and schedule all of the things that I like to bake and to cook. And I make sure that in November and December, I have time to do that, especially the more um, time intensive things like I make lefse, which is a Norwegian flatbread, kind of like a tortilla. It's made out of potatoes. It is very time intensive. It's not very hard, but it's time intensive. So I make sure that in December, I have a lefse making day on my calendar. It's usually when my son is still in school. Um, so that, um, I have the whole day to myself to make lefse. Um, and I make sure that my whole family knows that um, and they respect that time. Um, and I, we bake cookies. I always make a list over in this notes section. One of the things that I write down is all the different kinds of cookies that I want to make in December. And I actually schedule them. I don't like to make more than one kind of cookie at a time. So I, you know, schedule out that maybe this year it'll be every Thursday I make a different kind of cookie or something like that. Um, we have, um, we include all of the Sundays in Advent. 
Um, we also include Hanukkah um, and those days, um, and it goes all the way through to Christmas Eve. I'm sorry, New Year's Eve. So you have the entire holiday season laid out, however you celebrate the holidays. I will say that this is very Christmas-centric. Um, our plan is at some point to be able to do something that is less Christmas-centric and more um, another version that is It'll be called um, The Nice List All Year. Um, and we. I, my hope is that in 2020, that'll be available too. Um, for those of you who have families that may celebrate Christmas, but also um, have other traditions or maybe don't celebrate Christmas, but are part of other traditions because gift giving, of course, is big regardless of who you are. Thanks, little bird. Thanks for stopping by. And I really appreciate your um, enthusiasm. So calendars, um, like I said, I also have a coupon and codes tracker. Think of all those emails that you get, oh my gosh, starting about mid-October with sales and Black Friday deals and all of those kinds of things. Here's a place to, tr to track all of those coupon codes that you may have that you feel like are um, important and helpful and you can write them all down. That's part of the budgeting section too. Um, there's the giving list, like I talked about. This is where you write down what you actually buy for each person. So their name, the gift, the store or source, if that's something important. There's a place to include the shipping costs. Oh my goodness, I have always lived really far from my family. And when you live far away from your family, you can get eaten alive by shipping costs. So one of the things I've learned to do is to make sure that all of my everything that's going to need to be shipped for Christmas has to be purchased by the 12th of December. Um, that is just kind of the way it works. And that way I don't get eaten alive by shipping costs. But I include that here too. And then a, a, a place to check off purchased and a place to check off mailed or given. Um, and that way you're keeping track of all of those things. And that's true for each of the different, the three different categories, work and school, family and friends. And then the last section here is called journaling and planning. And this is just basically a section of blank paper. There's gridded paper and there's um, lined paper. And this is for all of you who do bullet journaling, um, who are list makers, all, I'm all of those things. Um, in my book, <clears throat> one of the things I do every year I put a copy of our Christmas picture. I glue that in here. This one was taken by Ashley Burke, who is a fabulous photographer here in um, Boulder. And then um, I also put in our Christmas card. And I just glue the envelope in and tuck a copy in. And then I have our Christmas card here as well. Um, and I track who, I, who we give Christmas cards to in the back of my book. Um, so I have that as well. But you have lots of pages here. This, you could put recipes in the back. You can plan meals in the back. You have room to do all of that kind of planning. Again, making sure that you're getting all the things that you love into your Christmas season. And at the very back, on the back cover of the nice list, I also include this lovely little pocket. And this is really intended for your receipts. When I'm out shopping and I keep this in my purse, um, I tuck every receipt from Christmas shopping into um, this envelope. And that way I have it if we need to make a re return or exchange. Um, I also have a record of what I actually spent to make sure that I'm staying on my budget. All of those things are tucked in here and tucked away. Um, and that way I have that in my records. And they're all in one place and not cluttering the bottom of my purse or my... Um, wallet or whatever. So, um, so those that is the Chris the nice list in a nutshell. Has this really nice elastic strap on it. Also has a bookmark, which I find really fantastic. Um, and there it is. It's available on my website midmodernmama.com. The link is in my profile. Um, but it's available. It's twenty nine dollars. That's shipped. Um, that includes shipping wherever you are in the U.S. 
Um, if you are international and you want to order, um, send me a DM and we'll figure out what the inter the shipping upcharge is for international orders. Um, that depends country to country, but we can absolutely make that happen. They will be, I'm taking pre-orders through September 15th. Um, and then the books will be shipped out and will be to you if you're in the U.S., um, by the 1st of November. If you're not in the U.S., shipping takes a little bit longer, um, but I'll be able to give you an estimate for what that is. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can send me a DM um, or you can um, chime in here, but um, let me know if you have any questions. And I hope the nice list is a tool that will help make your Christmas merrier and a whole lot less stressful. That is what it's designed for. Thanks for joining me.